Welcome back to the program. The UN Security Council on Friday adopted a resolution demanding an end to Israeli settlement building, much to Israel's disappointment. The vote was able to pass the 15-member council because the U.S. abstained from its usual role of diplomatically shielding Israel. The 15-member council had gathered to make a resolution, and it was indeed surprising the United States decided to abstain. A rare step exhibited by Washington, which usually shields Israel from such action. Mr. President, today is a dark day for this The resolution demanded that Israel immediately and completely cease all settlement activities in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem, and said the establishment of settlements by Israel has no legal validity and constitutes a flagrant violation under international law. It is because this resolution reflects the facts on the ground and is consistent with U.S. policy across Republican and Democratic administrations throughout the history of the State of Israel that the United States did not veto it. At the same time, the Prime Minister has said that he is still committed to pursuing a two-state solution. But these statements are irreconcilable. One cannot simultaneously champion expanding Israeli settlements and champion a viable two-state solution that would end the conflict. One has to make a choice between settlements and separation. We believe, though, that continued b settlement building seriously undermines Israel's security. Some may cast the U.S. vote as a sign that we have finally given up on a two-state solution. Nothing could be further from the truth. None of us can give up on a two-state solution. We continue to believe that that solution is the only viable path to provide peace and security for the state of Israel and freedom and dignity for the Palestinian people. The resolution was put forward by New Zealand, Malaysia, Venezuela and Senegal. A day after Egypt withdrew it under pressure from Israel and U.S. President-elect Donald Trump. Israel and Mr. Trump had called on the United States to veto the measure. It was adopted with 14 votes in favor to a round of applause, becoming the first resolution the Security Council has adopted on Israel and the Palestinians in nearly eight years. A resolution needs nine votes in favor, no vetoes by the United States, France, Russia, Britain or China to be adopted. The Palestinians want an independent state in the West Bank, Gaza and East Jerusalem, areas where Israel captured in a 1967 war. Israel disputes that settlements are illegal and says their final status should be determined in talks on Palestinian statehood. The last round of U.S.-led peace talks between Israelis and Palestinians collapsed in 2014. Reactions have been mixed since the resolution. Executive Director of B'Tselem Organization, the Israeli Information Center for Human Rights in the Occupied Territories, said the resolution seeks the well-being of all people in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories, and it is not an anti-Israeli resolution. The Security Council's resounding resolution reaffirms the international consensus uh, on the settlements and their consequences with regard to the human rights of Palestinians. Contrary to government spin, this resolution is not an anti-Israeli resolution. This is a resolution that is for the future of Israelis, for the future of Palestinians, rejecting the occupation and the settlements. This is symbolically extremely important and may lead, looking forward, to additional international steps that will hopefully pull all of us, pull all of us both Israelis and Palestinians, out of what is perceived as a status quo, but in fact is not a status quo, but a continuous advancement all of the time, year in and year out, of the building of settlements and the displacement of Palestinians. For Chief Palestinian Negotiator Saeb Erkat, the anti-settlement resolution at the UN Security Council constituted a day of victory. This is a day of hope, a day of peace. This is a victory for those who believe in peace, who believe in the two-state solution, and this is a total defeat for those forces of extremism in Israel who believe in destroying the two-state solution and achieving and sustaining the apartheid regime that they're building in the West Bank. Residents of the Jerusalem settlement of Har Homa voiced anger over the resolution, but also said that previous anti-Israeli resolutions by the UN had very little effect over reality on the ground. 
Now here are other discussions in diplomatic circles we're keeping a close eye on. Israel is still reacting to the UN resolution and vote, summoning the ambassadors of 10 nations that voted to reprimand them over the resolution. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was visibly angry during the weekly cabinet meeting, accusing the United States of conspiring with the Palestinians to push for the resolution's adoption. The White House has denied the allegation. Over decades, uh, American administrations and Israeli governments have disagreed about settlements, but we agreed that the Security Council was not the place to resolve this issue. We knew that going there would make negotiations harder and drive peace further away. And uh, as I told John Kerry on Thursday, friends don't take friends to the Security Council. I'm encouraged uh, by the statements of our friends in the United States, Republicans and Democrats alike. They understand how reckless and destructive this UN resolution was. They understand that the Western Wall isn't occupied territory. I look forward to uh, working with those friends and with the new administration when it takes office next month. The 10 ambassadors that voted in favor of the resolution and have embassies in Israel are from Britain, China, Russia, France, Japan, Uruguay, Spain, Ukraine and New Zealand. Reactions in Israel remain mixed, however. The significance of the UN resolution in the short term is that extremists on both sides will be strengthened. The extremists on the Jewish side will say we have to build that the world will be against Israel no matter what we do. The extremists among the Arabs will say terror pays that the world makes decisions that really encourage terror, like they did yesterday. But the long-term significance is that uh, we see decisions like this that don't accomplish anything will perhaps lead the world to realize that this isn't the way to go. I think it will limit the actions of uh, the government of Bibi Netanyahu in the settlements uh, and uh, hopefully will make uh, more justice towards the people. I think the, con the resolution and the vote in the UN against Israel came as a final stamp between uh, the relationship between Obama and Netanyahu. I think uh, they both try to come against each other at this, at this vote. I hope the next four years will be a little bit more pro-Israeli and President Trump will, be, will help us achieve a little bit more. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin says he is willing to continue enhancing ties with China both within economic cooperation and international issues. He made the remark during a press conference in Moscow as he congratulated China on her inclusion in the International Monetary Fund's special drawing right basket on October 1st. Both countries hold similar stances on some key issues which help maintain the world's stability. Imports and export trade between both countries hit $68 billion in 2015. Finally, talks to end a political crisis in the Democratic Republic of Congo had to be suspended on Saturday following 48 hours of fruitless negotiations, as President Joseph Kabila still refuses to hand over power. President Kabila's second and final five-year term ended on December 20th, but is yet to step down and has shown no intention of leaving office. His defiance has resulted in protests in which at least 40 people have been killed. The talks, mediated by the influential Catholic Church since December 8th, are now expected to resume after the Christmas break in the hopes a deal could be reached by December 30th. That's it on the program this week. I'm glad you could join us, but we also welcome your comments when you send them to at Diplomatic Chan and at Amarachi underscore Ubani. I'll see you next time.